Hello and welcome to the Underground. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to replace a power cube on a sensor or a unison dimming module, which may be necessary if you find through your troubleshooting process that you have a circuit or circuits that are burned out on a module and you're swapping it around and it seems to follow the unit. You don't really need to replace any of the components other than this power cube here, which we're going to be working on a D20. So as you can see, it is a Q141. So what you'll need here beyond your power cube and the damage module is a Phillips head screwdriver. There is a single Phillips head screw right here that you just need to back out. Go ahead and give it a couple turns to the left and it should back right out there into your hand. Go ahead and take that off, put that in safe location. Now all you have to do to take out the module is go ahead and pull that and give it a little tug and it'll come right out. So you'll find here that there's two spade terminals where those connect. And then all you have to do is pull them off. They may be a little stiff, so as we can see right here. All you need is like another tool, just something to kind of help pry it away just a little bit, a little bit of leverage, and it'll come right off. And there you go. Go ahead and take that power cube away. And now the process is easy. All you have to do is just kind of reverse what you're doing. Take it, put it on the spade terminals here. The copper is a little, uh, not flimsy, but uh, it does give and move around a little bit, so beware and make sure you have everything lined up before you give it a good push. Once it's on, you can see it's just right there. Just give it another quick test. Now you notice down here where the power cube sits, there is a little copper plate. That is a grounding plate for the module. You want to make sure that that is fully seated again against the wall before you grab your module and slide this just in there. Next, what you'll need to do is go ahead and push those wires down. Make sure that they're out of the way so you can slide your screw back in there. Now, to get the screw back in, I've actually found there's a better trick for this. So we're going to turn this on its edge and set it down here on the connector so you can still see it right here. You're going to grab your screw and you're just gently going to tight it, get it lined up in here, and you'll just put it in. It's right near the top of that hole right there. You can see it just kind of sets right in there. Now. I always do just a few finger turns here to get it started. And then you should be able to just take your screwdriver, get it in there. Sorry, I'm blocking your view. Give it a couple quick turns and you are tightened. At this point, you should be good to go to just double check, make sure it's not bouncing around too much there. As you can see, mine kind of moved, so it didn't quite have it done there. So give me just a second. You always want to make sure that everything is good and tight before you go any further because you don't want that coming out or getting connected on the lugs when you're plugging in. So at this point, you should be good to uh, slide this back into your rack and power it up and give your circuits a test. Thank you for watching.